Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Glory to God. Um, one of the, the, the words that came to me uh, concerning the night was, and when she heard of Jesus. And when we're, let's, so let's read here from Mark's gospel. We'll just kind of pick up. Um, I don't even mind reading starting in the first verse because it's, it's kind of like the miracle chapter here. Um, As they passed over to the other side into the country of the Gadarenes, and when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him uh, out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had it, uh, his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind, uh, bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had often been bound with fetters and chains, and these chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken into places, pieces, neither could any man tame him. Now, he's, just, he's a wild man full of demons. This is unnatural or supernatural, demonic supernatural strength. Um, and always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus, now, let's just think all these people who are slashing and cutting now, that's just demonic. That's a new thing now for you know, people to cut themselves. I remember I went to the water park a few years ago. I saw somebody I used to go to church with, with a friend. And I walked up and, and I thought, dear Lord, because they had a girl with her. And I thought, she had to have been in a horrible automobile accident. I mean, she had scars everywhere. I mean, just, just like she had gone through glass and just got cut all to pieces. I mean, and, and I mean everywhere. And I found out later, she they call a slasher or a cutter. Just we cut themselves. That's demonic. That's not just a psychological disorder. It's demonic. Okay? How, how do you do it? Well, the Bible tells the one guy, the one guy in the Bible we had doing it, he was full of the devil. All right? It is a demonic activity. It's not godly. And it's not just, you know, you, you know just kind of abnormal. It's demonic. Okay? And um, so if you, if you know people do it, you need to cast the devil out of them. Hello? And when he saw Jesus uh, uh, cutting himself with stones, and when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Now, these are the devils talking. It's not the man. Okay? He's so full of the devil that the devil even talks through him where he's not in control anymore. And he, that is Jesus. Oh, it's actually in... Um, and he said unto him, Come out of this man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Now, Roman Legion was 2,000 soldiers. Okay? So he had 2,000 devils in there. That's a lot of devils. All right? And he besought him much that he would not send him away out of the country. And there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. Now, that's pigs. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. Now, demon spirits uh, want to be embodied in some type of flesh to function in this realm. Even if it's, if, even if it's animal flesh, they want to be able to function in this realm. And, um, and he besought, uh, and, they, and, and, and forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And that means he allowed them to do that. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. They just went out. The, the, the pigs didn't even want them. The pigs didn't even want the devils in them. So they just went and drowned themselves. They rather really drowned themselves and had the devils in them. And they that fed the swine fled and told it to the city and the country, and, the, and went, they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and, the, and, and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid. Now, how could they be more afraid the fact that he's been delivered than they are of him being possessed? You, you just you got to wonder about people sometimes. I'm just really honestly. They're more concerned about the fact that the guy's free in his right mind than the word that he was possessed before. Why? Because they knew it so well, they were more comfortable with what they knew than they were with what they didn't know or didn't understand. They'd rather have the guy possessed because they knew that than to have him free. That's, that's how crazy people can get and they began to pray him to depart out of their coast instead of saying glory to God man this guy's been set free let's keep let's keep Jesus around and get more done for the kingdom or get more done for people get more people set free get out of here you came and cast the devil out of the guy 
I mean, he, we, we lost a whole herd of pigs to the, to the guy getting the, the devil cast out of him. The devils, 2,000 of them came out. It just don't make sense, does it? But who said people who, who, who don't, uh, don't understand spiritual things make sense anyway? And, um, and when he was coming to the ship, he, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed to him, or, or basically asked him, uh, that, he might not be, that he might be with him. But Jesus suffered him not or didn't allow him. He said, go to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and hath con had compassion on thee. He departed, began to publish in the capitalist how great things Jesus had done for him and all men did marvel. And when Jesus was passed again by a ship to the other side, much people, people gathered unto him and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet, besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Now, you know, word gets out. When, when we need to publish and testify and tell people that God, that, that Jesus still heals, that Jesus is the healer, that you can, get, you can receive miracles uh, through, through ministry of laying on of hands by coming in faith to Jesus, that Jesus is the healer. Yeah. Amen? Um, I have a, a high school acquaintance that I know. Their, their husband is a, is a um, litur I think a Methodist minister. I was going to say liturgical, but a Methodist minister. And um, he just put on Facebook, he got diagnosed with some lymphomic, some, lymphomic something or another. And, you know, everybody's saying, you know, and people saying they're sorry. And others are saying, you know, let, let the fight begin. You're going to fight. But I, I just gave him, I, I said, Jehovah Rapha's your healer. Well, him being a minister, he, would know where, he should know where to find that. Amen. You know, we, we got to give people the understanding. It's not just fighting the natural. It's not fight. Yeah, you got to, you know, maybe you have to fight and do some things in the natural. You may have to take some medicine or whatever uh, to, you know, prolong or whatever. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying if that's what you need to do, do it. But I'm telling you, well, our answer is in God. We need to have a faith that God is, that God does what he said in his word. People need to hear that Jesus is the healer and know that, that healing belongs to us and healing is available to us instead of kind of keeping it a secret or saying, well, I'll pray for you. Well, ask him if I can pray for you. Now, I will pray for you. What do you mean can I can? Because if you get him to say, yeah, yeah, you can pray for me, go ahead and pray for him. Get your hands on him. Get the prayer cloths to him. Amen? Hallelujah. Give him the scriptures concerning the prayer cloths and, and, and get it in the hands. Don't, don't kind of make it this, you know, pass it off. Well, we'll be praying for you. You've got to give them something where faith can arise. Why? Well, let's look on further on this, this chapter. And... Um, that, you know, that she may lay your hands on her so that may, may, she may be healed and she shall live. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. Now, we've talked about this in the past. A throng is not three people you bump into on the, on the sidewalk. A throng is New York City at rush hour on the sidewalks. Going to or coming from work or going to lunch. There's so many people you can't help but run into folk. And they know the tourists, because the tourists are, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, or they're looking up at the skyscrapers and running into people. Amen. They, they, they just put their hands in the pockets and go. And if they knock you down, they just knock you down and keep right on going. You know? Or they'll walk out in the street and hold the hand out for the car to stop and keep right on going. You know? I mean, you, and you're going to run into people. If you walk the streets of New York City, you're going to run into folk. Kind of like Disney World in the summer. You know, coming into the park, you ever into a theme park, they got ready to open the gates, you know, they got everybody, everybody's gotten in, but they got that place where they got the ropes, you can't go any further, and then they open, everybody just, because they're trying to get to the newest, latest, greatest, hottest ride or whatever, and you're running all, I remember um, when uh, Janie and I first started dating, we started dating in 1977, and that Christmas, my family went to Florida for a vacation, we had lived in Florida as when I was younger, for about a year and a half, and uh, we went to Disney World, now back then, they, you only had like uh the, the Magic Kingdom. I don't even think Epcot Center was built at that. May have been, you know, because this is this is 70, 77. The Magic, I mean, Epcot may have been built, but you had the Magic Kingdom. And I remember we, we got into the park, and Janie and I were walking, and uh, we got a little bit separated, and, and I had to go all the way over to the other side and jump up and down and try, you know, that's really hard with Janie. Uh, she's down here to defend herself. Five two, and I'm jumping up and down trying to find her in that crowd because you're you're throwing, you're just the, the 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 crowd is its own entity, and it just moves. If you get kind of caught, you know, separated, it'll just move you in a whole another direction. That's being thronged. You're getting touched now. 
Not only was Jesus being thronged by, you know, just being because of the crowd, he was being touched out of curiosity touches. People, you know, superstar. Jesus, you know, uh, I mean, I guess they kind of had that, that mindset from the rock opera, Jesus Christ Superstar. You know, I mean, he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a star, and he's the rising ministry on the scene, and everybody wants to touch him. You know, we, we get such uh, man-worship idol-mindedness about things, we become ridiculous. We can get ridiculous. Amen? We can get stupid. You know, there, there are men or women who are anointed and used of God. We don't have to get weird about it. Okay? And people can get crazy, they, and they deal with Jesus. All right, so. This one kind of give you the idea. There's a bunch of folk bumping into him. And, and, so, and the multitude, many people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood, 12 years, and she had a, a, a constant flow of blood, had suffered many things of many physicians and spent all she had was nothing better but rather grew worse. In other words, the doc, she was going to do, every doctor she could go to, they tried everything they could think of and nothing was working. And it cost her all of her money. She spent all, the, all that she had. She spent all of her money trying to get cured. Nobody could, nobody could fix her. As a matter of fact, the Bible says she was nothing better but rather grew worse. She just got worse. I mean, obviously, anemia is setting in. Uh, when you're losing that much blood constantly, constantly losing blood, the body can only reproduce it so fast, you become anemic. This has been going on for 12 years. That's not a good thing. I said, that's not a good thing. And, um, and so... But listen to this next verse. When she heard of Jesus, when she heard of Jesus, when she heard of Jesus. Now, I, I, I've got to believe she heard something other than, well, you never know what the Lord's going to do. I just can't imagine that's what she heard. I can't imagine she heard, well, you know, the Lord will work out his own, his own will in his own good time for his own purposes. You're not, you know, God might be teaching you something. I can't believe she heard that. Why? Well, the Bible says when she heard of Jesus came in the press and touched his garment, for she said, if I can touch but the, his clothes, I shall be whole. Now, she had to have heard that coming in contact with Jesus in faith will get you well. Why? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. She heard of the word. She heard about Jesus. Faith had come to her. She had heard something that produced faith in her. So much so. Now, the Greek says here, she said and kept on saying. For she said and kept on saying. If I can but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. If I can but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. If I can but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. If I can but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. Now, she wasn't saying what the law demanded, she said. She was considered unclean. So when she went out in the public, what she was supposed to do was say unclean, and so people would get away from her. She was considered to have a communicable disease, and therefore she was not permitted, you know, to go in public and not let people know, I'm unclean. So she was, say, un she was supposed to say unclean so people could get away from her and not come in contact with her. But she wasn't saying unclean. She said if I can but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. See, when you get into faith, you forget about everything else. You forget about the circumstances. Amen? Now, the Bible says that she came in the press behind and touched his garments. Now, there's a press there. I, I just doubt she just walked up. This is, this is an anemic woman. She just didn't go and push everybody out of the way and get up to Jesus. Amen? Uh, as a matter of fact, it's more likely she crawled in. Amen? I say it's more likely that she crawled in and got a hold of him and touched him down the, um, touch, touched the hem of his garment. She, she kind of got herself in there in a, in, a, in a way that she could get to him. But I just don't believe um, that she was able just to walk in there and get right in contact with him, you know, just bust, bust through the crowd. She's an anemic woman, been there for 12 years. She's, she's not full of strength and vitality. She's not Schwarzenegger going in there to get healed, you know? I'll be back. I'm here. All right, you know? Um, so she said, if I, can but if I can but touch his garments, I shall be whole. But what, here's the key to all this. She heard of Jesus. Somebody took the time to share that Jesus is the healer with her. She heard that. And something produced, it produced something in her to where she began to meditate on that and began to confess that. Now, I know I've told this story before, but it bears repeating. Every time I tell this story, it kind of bears repeating. I remember uh, Buddy Harrison um, 
when I was, you know, we, we, uh, we had, my brother, brother Buddy was Kenneth Hagin's son-in-law, married to Pat Harrison. And brother Buddy's gone home to be with the Lord. He went home before dad did. And um, I guess about 90, 97, 98, somewhere in there, maybe brother Buddy went home. Um, but Buddy, Buddy was telling a story, you know, he had that, uh, what they call Faith Christian Fellowship. And there's a series of churches and ministers that, that joined Faith Christian Fellowship that before Rhema Ministry Association was started, many, many, many of the Rhema graduates were, were associated with SCF. And then, uh, you know, they, didn't, they started Rhema years later. And um, a lot of people went back to Rhema uh, because that was their roots. And so, uh, but Brother Buddy had Faith Christian Fellowship. And, and on the north side of Tulsa, they had bought an old um, shopping mall. And I can't remember if it was a Kmart or a Target or whatever that building was, but it was an old, you know, it was an old superstore, you know, kind of a superstore kind of, you know, thing, Kmart, whatever. Um, out in front, they had a, um, a uh, Firestone tire place. They took, bought that building, turned it into their offices. That was just the offices. That, that one place was all the offices for, the, for FCF International. But the other, other place, and I was there the very first service they had. They, were, they opened up their first Sunday night. Their first service was a Sunday night of camp, uh, before camp meeting of 1980. It was 103 degrees, and their air conditioning was broke. And there was 5,000 people in there. <laughs> so <clears throat> it was a hot day, and, and Norval preached. <laughs> we didn't care. It was still a good service. Hallelujah. Amen. And, uh, but, and, the, and that, that, that way they called SCF North Adventure because they put some other, they had an SCF down in, the, um, in, in Bixby, and they had some in, you know, in, in south and uh, west of Tulsa. They had smaller satellite campuses and um and, and brother buddy was talking and he preached on the radio there in Tulsa and he's preaching on healing and faith and you know the things of God and uh, there's this woman that she was sick and um she couldn't get well and uh, she got to hear him brother buddy on the radio preach and when she got to hear him preach you know faith began to rise you know they talked about they laid hands on the sick people got healed amen and so she started she started saying you know I, uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to that church, and he's gonna lay hands on me, and I'm gonna be healed. And then she got it down. And she set a date. I'm going this coming Sunday, and I'm gonna go to that church, and I'm gonna go in there, and he, he uh, Buddy Harris is gonna lay hands on me, and I'm gonna get healed. And see, she got her faith going. She got enough faith up. She was able to get in the car and drive to church. And it, it, you know that's, that was a, that was a venture for her because she was been really sick. And uh, she got out of car, was breaking away across the parking lot, and and the greeter at the door. You know they had greeters and. Uh, and, uh, and, and the Lord spoke to the greeter and said, next person walks through the door, dance with them. So you get your faith out there, God will meet you beforehand. And uh, the next person through that door was that woman. And she opened the door, and that greeter grabbed her hands and just spun around the lobby with her. And while they were dancing, she got healed. But see, she put her faith out. She, she didn't even get to get into healing service. Well, praise the Lord, she got healed so she could go enjoy the service. Amen. But what I'm saying is she put her faith out there, and it, it began to move her. And as it moved her and got her where she could get out, she got, got enough uh, energy to get up and get there. This woman with the issue of blood kept saying, if, she, if, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch him, I'll be whole. Faith arose and gave her the strength to get up and go to Jesus. This other woman in Tulsa got up and got her car and got, got, to, got to the church, and, met, and, and Jesus just met her at the front door. He said, now, honey, you don't have to make it to, up there to the prayer line. I'll go ahead and get you right here. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. See, that's why, we, that's why we do television. That's why we do the things we do. That's why we broadcast. It's, it's we, if people can hear that Jesus is the healer, well, what about the people who mock it and don't believe it? That's their problem. I don't care. I don't, I, 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 well, I do care for them, but I don't care what they think. That's just their business. I can't help those who don't want help. But if we can reach one person and get, one, get to one person, and they can get it. The glory to God it was worth all the effort. I said it was worth all the effort. Hallelujah. The people our ministry has touched over the years, it's worth the effort. Amen. And, and, and it's been kind of weird. So many of the people we've touched don't even go to church here, not even around here. They've been, they got ministered to distance-wise. Well, it, does it matter? We were able to reach them. I said we were able to reach them. They, they watched us on the, on the Internet. They watched us on our, our broadcast. They, they've heard us preach. And it's, it's brought light to them. See, Jesus, that, that Jesus is the healer. We need to let people know that God is still in the healing. And, and you know, people, and people get upset about this, but the healing business. He still heals people. He didn't quit healing just because they got the canonosity of Scripture. He didn't get healing the day that John, the, 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 uh, the one that Jesus loved, died. Okay? 
The apostle of love died. Jesus didn't stop healing. God, the Bible says in Hebrews, the 13th chapter and the 8th verse, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. How often? Yesterday, today, and forever. See, we see this when God gave his covenant name back in the book of Exodus. I'm the Lord that healeth thee, King James says, Jehovah Rapha in the Hebrew, or, you know, the four-letter word, Y-H-W-H hyphen Rapha. Okay, you get it? Yahweh Rapha, you know, Jehovah Rapha. We've talked about the, 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 how the words uh, became, uh, obtained vowels and, and so forth. But you understand what I'm saying. The Lord that healeth thee. The, the covenant God that heals thee. Now, God says this. Now, now think about this. The Bible says that he, he gave a covenant name. That means in covenant with God, he's your healer. Then God says this, I'm the Lord that changed not. As a matter of fact, when you study Schofield's notes on the, the word Jehovah or Y-H-W-H, the letters, Yahweh, Jehovah, Y-H-W-H, Lord in all small caps, he says it's, it's the name, it's the, it is the peculiar or particular name of the covenant of God with his covenant people. The everlasting covenant that God can't change. That's who God is. He is the covenant God. Think about that. God's a covenant God. Now, the book of Hebrews says, I believe over in chapter 9, it says, these establish a new and a better covenant on better promises. Glory to God. Now, some people get dumb. If the new covenant doesn't include Jehovah Rapha and Jehovah Shalom, and Jehovah to Sidke knew. Now, see, they'll take the ones where he's the Lord, our righteousness, and then they'll turn right around and get rid of the one he's our healer or our provider. Well, you just never know. No, God, that, and then Scofield says about the different compound names. He said it leads to an ever-increasing self-revelation of who he is in his covenant. He's Jehovah Shalom, though he is our peace. Now, there's a lot of people who run around and say, God's my peace, and turn right around and say, he doesn't heal. He can't change. He's the same. He's the covenant God. And if he's Jehovah Shalom, and even in the new covenant, he's our peace. He's our healer. Somebody help me out here. We've got to stop listening to bozos and start looking at the word. He's the covenant God. He says, I am the Lord which keepeth covenant unto a thousand generations. Now, a Jewish generation was about 44 years. At least that's 44,000 years. We hadn't quite got there yet. We all know that, you know, from the writing of the, the earliest writings of any scripture, that it's not been, it's not been 44,000 years. Amen. God is a covenant-keeping God, meaning this, that he is still the healer. He, Jesus said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means that just because he came to the earth and walked as a man under the covenant, fulfilled, the, fulfilled his, his purpose on the earth in bringing salvation to humanity, does not mean that when he got to heaven, he stopped being who he is. He's still the same. You come by faith to him, and you will still get the answers that the word promises you by faith. That's why we need to tell people that Jesus is the healer. Everybody say, Jesus is the healer. Jesus heals. Now, on one side, you can go, well, he's already provided healing. We just receive it by faith. And I understand the same thing we, you know, Jesus says. We're talking about, you know, well, he's already provided salvation. It's already been an accomplished work. We receive it by faith. I get that, I'm, you know. But, you know, sometimes you get there and you, you lose people. You lose, sometimes you'll just lose the unlearned until they can get there. It's the fact that Jesus is the one who healed them. So, you know, sometimes people get into semantics. And I understand it for teaching purposes and establishing the covenant. But when you, you go out to a center and try to say, now, look, Jesus has already healed you. All you got to do is receive. They don't get that. You know, receive the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. And they do. And they, they don't get it that it was already done 2,000 years ago. They just had to accept it. That, that's, that's beyond them at that point. You know, let's just let them know Jesus is their healer. Jesus healed them. Amen? Amen? In other words, what he's already procured and obtained for them, he'll apply on their life if, you, if, they, if, he, if they'll get, up, get into faith or allow you to minister to them by the gifts of the Spirit or by the laying on of hands. He'll administer that to their life at that point. Yeah, it was already purchased and already established, but they, they had to receive it. And, you, and you, you try to get into a theological discussion. See, we do, we, you know. Now, with Christians, it's a different thing sometimes. Sometimes you've got to get them to understand stuff. But people who aren't saved, you just got to just tell them, Jesus will heal you, man. Amen. Jesus, Jesus loves you. He'll heal you just to show you how much he loves you. <laughs> Glory to God. Then after you get healed, come on and get saved because you want more. 
Amen. I said, amen. Glory to God. So um, this woman heard of Jesus, got up out of her bed, started walking around saying, if I can touch him, I should be whole. If I can touch him, I should be whole. Went out there, got out in the press, went and touched his garments. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that, I'm sorry, uh, and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And then the bozo gang steps up. That's Peter, James, and John. And his disciples said unto him, thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, who touched me? Now, <laughs> you've got to think Jesus every once in a while just thought, kind of like Moses did, what have I done to deserve this bunch? You know, I mean, and the Bible says that he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. He didn't even acknowledge what they said. He said, who touched me? And they went, hey, Jesus. Probably looked at each other first and went, he didn't get enough sleep last night. Now, look, Master, you see the multitudes thronging you, and sayest thou who touched me? Yeah, you, you can hear the sarcasm dripping in this. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Lord, everybody's touching you. Now, they're trying to be respectful, but they're also kind of like, been up too late at night, spending too many hours, too many, he's, he's praying too much, not spending enough time getting rest. You know, he's, he needs to spend a little less time praying, a little more time resting. Uh, yeah, they, you know, thou seest the multitude throng of thee, and you say, who touched me? And he just, he just ignored them. You ever been around anybody like that? They're so focused, they just kind of, you know, you say something stupid, they just, they just forget you, they act like you ain't even in the room. Hello. And he looked round about to see who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Listen to what Jesus says. He said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Now, everybody who reads this who doesn't have an understanding, you know, in other words, they, they don't believe that, you know, that, that, that we initiate anything on our end or, you know, God just heals whomever he decides to heal. You know, it's just, it's just a sovereign move of God and, and, and you had nothing to do with it. Uh, we'll read that and come away from there and go, see, power went. Jesus healed her with his virtue. You might even have, um, you know, um, oh, I don't know, different Bibles put up at the top. You know, Jesus healeth the woman with the issue of blood. Now, on one side of that, that might be accurate, but the truth of the matter is it was Jesus didn't give credit to his virtue doing it. See, when we go back, Remember that Jesus was, uh, went into Peter's house and there were Pharisees and doctors of the law from every town around about. And the Bible says this, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Remember that story or that account? It's not even a story, it's an account. And, um, you know, Jesus is teaching and preaching. And, they, and there, a man came on a stretcher. Four, four friends brought this man on a stretcher and they couldn't get in. So they climbed up on the roof and tore the roof off and let him down in the midst of them. Remember that? If you, if you study that whole thing, you'll find that it says this. There were, many, there were many lawyers and doctors of the law from every town round about, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. It was already resident there. Now, can I ask a question just, just for analytical purposes? If the power of the Lord was present to heal them, then why didn't any of them get healed? Because if you believe, listen, God would have not made the power of the Lord available to heal them if it wasn't his will for them to be healed. I mean, that's over in Luke chapter, is that in Luke chapter? Yeah, yeah, Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Uh, they came out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. Now, Luke 5, 17, here we are. The power of the Lord was, now God doesn't send his power somewhere just for the fun of sending his power somewhere so he can tell you you can't have it. It says it came a certain day he was teaching that the Pharisees and doctors were sitting by, which would come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem, and uh, the power of the Lord was present to heal them. This tells me his will was to heal everybody there. If his power was present to heal them, then it was his will to heal them. Then why didn't any of them get healed? 
If you read the whole chapter, you find out not a one of them that was in that room when this statement was made got healed. Nada. Zilch. Goose egg. None. Next. Nine. Okay. Let's go ahead and read, read some more of this. Luke chapter 5. And behold, men brought now. Let's see. Now, men brought in a bed, a man that was taken with a palsy, and sought means by which to bring him in, and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went up on the housetop and let him down uh, through the tiling uh, with his couch in the midst before Jesus. Now, that just tells me that man wasn't there when the scripture said that the power of the Lord was present to heal them. As a matter of fact, verses 18 and 19 tell us that he comes in later. Now, notice he did not say the power of the Lord was present there to heal him who was coming later. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. And we've, when we read the whole account, um, and we saw their faith. Whose faith? The people who brought the man. They were so determined to get him before Jesus, they wouldn't let the crowd stop. They just went out and ripped the roof off and threw him down in the midst. Probably more, more subtle that they let him down by rope. And Jesus said, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason. I'll tell you, you can reason yourself right out of a miracle. Uh, saying, who is this man which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said unto them, what reason ye in your hearts? Whether it's easier to say thy sins are forgiven thee or to say rise up and walk. But the, now this, I love this. This messes with reasoning minds. You begin to reason in your mind and this messes you up. What Jesus says. But that you may know the Son of Man has power upon the earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto you, rise up. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752. Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.